<laughs> yeah, he shut up. I stabbed me in your throat. What are you going to do? Cry, baby? No, but your mama cried when you were born. We were worried about him and he was always, he was always adamant about putting on a strong face for everybody because he didn't want to be the reason why nobody could, couldn't come back to work. You know, we had over 300 employees, you know, working on the set. So he was like, I'm not going to be the reason why nobody has no job. While we knew it was hard, he kept the brunt of it from us. Maybe the last six months of, of filming, he was on oxygen. So Bernie was literally like, if we were filming here, there was an oxygen tank right there. I, I believe they probably worked him to death. Who doesn't remember Jordan Tompkins from the Bernie Mac show? That ball of nerd charmed his way into everyone's hearts. But where's our favorite mischievous kid these days? Well, not in front of a camera, that's for sure. Despite the illustrious career that most folks had imagined for the child actor, the kid from the Bernie Mac show kind of disappeared from the acting scene and was forced to earn his paycheck as a construction worker. Here's what Jeremy Suarez revealed about going broke and homeless after the Bernie Mac show. Jeremy Suarez made his debut in Jerry Maguire as Rod Tidwell's son Tyson in 1996 at the young age of six. Tyson, hello? Hello, Jerry. Long time no see. And it's all thanks to his grandma. She actually introduced Jeremy to his first manager when he was only six months old, since he could talk at that age. From the get-go, it was apparent that Jeremy was born for this line of work. He managed to score some roles on some of everyone's favorite sitcoms like Sister, Sister, The Wayans Brothers, and Chicago Hope. And so not a lot of folks were surprised when he landed a role on The Bernie Mac Show when he was only eight years old. Mind you, most of us were still struggling with the alphabet at that age. He ended up being nominated for two NAACP Image Awards, an Annie Award, and two Young Artist Awards. Not surprising, from someone who was forming sentences when he was six months old. But the highlight of his resume will always be the Bernie Mac show, quite literally, because after that, it kind of went downhill for poor old Jeremy. But the mystery here is, why did the recruiters exactly stop calling after the show ended? Did casting managers start thinking he lacked talent? Well, not really. You see, Jeremy never lost his skills, but a nobody can fight growing old. When Jeremy got laid off from the Bernie Mac show, he was in his teens. That's an age where directors prefer hiring adults to play teens on the big screen instead of actual teens because that means not following child actor laws and no additional cost for hiring teachers on set. So it all came down to money and more exploitation for poor Jeremy getting the short end of the stick. But the real question is, what did Jeremy do when he went out of a job and the call stopped coming in? Cue the midlife crisis. Poor Jeremy was just as lost as any unemployed person out there. He did go to auditions and waited for calls, but the fish in the sea didn't take the bait. For Jeremy, who had spent half his life on set, going without any work for six months was new territory, one that pushed him into the wormhole known as depression. We've all been there, to be honest. For the next two and a half years, Picture teenager Jeremy beating himself up over what he was doing wrong and waiting patiently for a casting manager to call him back, except that the calls never came. Did Jeremy lose hope? Nah, that's not the Suarez way of doing things. He still had to make ends meet, so he went out there and got himself a job as a construction worker, thanks to his stepfather, who was in the same line of work. You'd think that an actor who spent most of his time looking good for the camera would crumble when it came to lifting heavy weights. But Jeremy wasn't about to be kicked in the teeth by life. He fit right in at his new workplace as if he'd been a construction worker in his past life. He ended up doing all kinds of odd jobs as a construction worker, cleaning wells and hauling around tools with a big cheeky smile on his face. He was also put in charge of the inventory shed, and Jeremy made sure that place was spotless to the point he was telling grown men, twice his age, not to mess up his work. Talk about guts. After some months of getting his hands dirty, Jeremy landed another job at a barbecue place because, at that point, he had grown immune to fire. Maybe he grew nerves of steel, literally. But one Valentine's Day and a rush at a salad bar, and Jeremy was out of that place faster than the wind. Unfortunately, the industry was still not ready to take in Jeremy, so what did he do? Retail. Picture Jeremy in a uniform, working hard to sell products with a big smile on his face. 
Kudos to him for rising above his circumstances and braving the waters of unemployment because it's a sad picture at the end of the day. As someone who worked right alongside the Bernie Mac, Jeremy should have stuck to his original job, but life doesn't always go your way. And thankfully, Jeremy knew how to make lemon juice out of the lemons he had gotten. Bernie tried his best to make sure everyone on set could work as long as possible. I mean, our guy was recording scenes with an oxygen tank on set. However, what did sting a little bit was the fact that no one got noticed about being laid off. When Bernie got sick, everyone was on edge. It was like, oh, we'll be back when Bernie gets better, until the comedian ended up in the hospital and Lady Death came knocking. We always had a thing where no one ever said goodbye. We just walk out the door because we always knew we was coming back. And uh, oh. generally we'd be gone for about a three month break or so. And then we would come back and start filming again. So that three month break turned into a four month break. We were like, hmm, what's going on? And that four month break turned into a five month break. And you know, at one point, maybe six, seven months down the line, we got a call saying, oh, you're not coming back officially. I want you to be my wingman and I want you to, I want you to open up for me. What I didn't know is he actually called me from the hospital and he was already had been hospitalized and um, that was April, May and then we, he was set to, to do a month of June, July and then he was gone. Still, Jeremy's love for Bernie never fizzled out. Mind you, he did know who Bernie was when he first got the role. But before you sharpen your pitchforks, give the poor lad a break. He was only eight back then. Find me an eight-year-old who knows Bernie Mac in this day and age. Anyways, once Jeremy got to work with the man himself, he was sucked into the black hole that's called Bernie Mac. I was like, wow, this guy is really funny. And at that point was when I knew I wanted the role, not because it was on TV or nothing, but I was like, man, this guy's really funny and he could teach me how to be really funny. And the love went both ways since Bernie always showered young Jeremy with love, playing along with his antics and hyping him up on set. Because I was the only little boy on the set, Bernie always knew that like sitting still and not cutting up and you know, not getting into trouble was not really my thing. So he, he loved to be like, hey, Jeremy, cut loose. Like I had a bite on set, a BMX bike that I would ride anytime I was not on like on camera or in school. And that's what we call the joys of being a single child. That said, it's no shocker that Jeremy was more sad about losing Bernie than his job. Still, one question remains, what are Suarez's plans for the future? Is he planning a comeback or have the hardships of life forced him to give up on his dream altogether? Well, unlike most folks out there, Suarez ain't a quitter. Despite Hollywood giving him the boot, Jeremy still dreams of returning to the big screen. Like at this point, I can remember pages and pages of lines, like quick, you know, because I got like ways to do it now. So I don't know, I think it'd be a shame if I didn't pass that on. Well, the main focus is just kind of reintroducing myself to Hollywood again and saying, hey, I'm here to work and I, I have great ideas and I'm not just what you think of me as, I'm that plus more, I'm that plus 2.0, you know? So it's really about coming in and not only nailing the roles that I get the opportunity to audition for, but also developing my own roles so that I can play the characters that I want to play and I can uh, give people the feelings that I want to give to them. Because I feel like there's not enough projects that as a young black man, you feel really good about yourself. He actually isn't too bummed out about working odd jobs to make ends meet. He thinks of them as different characters that he can draw inspiration from later if the opportunity ever comes knocking. And you know what's really interesting? Jeremy's a member of the dad club, but the fiery passion in him for acting continues to stay ablaze. Honestly, we all have something to learn from Jeremy. He continues to look for the silver lining in his circumstances. And I always had a second stream of income, then that should never be something that could stop me from being able to do what I love, which is acting and creating, you know, creating TV and, and movies. And if anyone thinks his skills have gotten rusty over time, well, don't think the tools are rusty until you take them out of the toolbox. Jeremy claims that he can learn pages and pages of lines faster than most people, and that's on 20 years of experience. Pages and pages of lines, like quick, you know, because I got like ways to do it now. So if any recruiters happen to be watching this video, make sure you give our boy a call because he really put in the work.
He might have had an N.A. spark for acting, but he never chickened out of putting in the hours. I think, of course, people have pre predispositions towards things. I think the, the ability to learn quickly is the talent that you may be born with. But anybody can learn it if they had enough practice. And that's, you know, I put in my 10,000 hours. Jeremy Suarez might be sneaking back into the limelight. And why not? He did get all that screen time with the legendary Bernie Mac for nothing. As of January 2024, our boy Jeremy is 34 years young and sitting pretty on a cool $700,000. And guess what? He's still in the game, folks. You can catch him flexing his acting chops in his latest acting gig. MD is for Mr. Dula. So let's not just sit around. Get those popcorn buckets ready and keep those fingers crossed for a grand Jeremy Suarez revival.